Hello and welcome to the Kane Forensics video series. In this video, we will look at the Autopsy Framework of Tools. Autopsy is a free forensic tool that is basically a digital forensics platform and graphical interface to the sleuth kit and other digital forensic tools. It is used by law enforcement, military, and corporate examiners to investigate what happened on a piece of digital media. The autopsy workflow is basically one, create a case, two, add a data source, three, analyze the data with ingest modules, four, manual analysis if necessary, and five, report generation. Step one, create a new case. Let's launch autopsy and then create a new case. You enter a case name, here, I suggest that you use the name of the subject of the investigation. In this example, Fabergé. Then choose the base directory. Let's put it in our home folder. Next, you can choose single user or multi-user. Let's click the only thing available, which is the single user. In the optional information pop-up, you can enter the optional case number and exam info such as your name, your phone, and your email, and notes. The last item here is the organization. You can create a new organization contact, such as the Springfield Police Department, Chief Clarence Wiggum, with his email and phone number. Step two, adding a data source. There are six options. You can add a disk image or virtual machine file, and the supported raw images are .img, .dd, .raw, and .bin for single files. And for split files, it supports the .001 and .aa file formats. For disk images, it can also read E01 or the expert witness format. The supported virtual machine files are VMDK and VHD formatted files. For a disk image, point to the first segment and autopsy will find the rest. You want to select the time zone that the disk image came from so that it can properly readjust the time for local time. And you can also select how to perform orphan file finding on FAT systems. This can be time intensive as it will require autopsy to look at each sector in the device. Other options are the local disk, which is any attached flash drive or external hard drive. It can look at logical files, so you can point it to a local file or folder. It can look at unallocated space within an image file. It can also look at autopsy logical imager results, and it can also look at XRY text export formatted files. Let's go ahead and choose the laptop image. I'm going to choose the time zone of GMT minus five Toronto. And then I'm going to let the program auto detect the sector size. Step three, configure ingest modules. Ingest modules are basically individual modules which perform specific tasks on your evidence, like looking for recent activity, performing hash lookups, email parsing, virtual machine extraction, etc. In the current version of Autopsy, there are about 66 default ingest modules loaded. You can select and deselect the ones you are interested in running. The more ingest modules you choose, the longer the analysis will take. You can always just pick a few important ones and then run the other ones later if you find the need for more detailed analysis. Some ingest modules will have pre-run settings. For example, if you click onto the extension mismatch detector, you can see that you can select to check all file types or all the file types except text files or only multimedia and executable files. You can also skip files without extensions and known files. 
So for example, if you are looking for someone who is hiding executable files as PDFs so that an unsuspecting user will click on the PDF file to launch it, this ingest module will find that file. Let's deselect all and just choose keyword search, interesting files identifies. And we will keep the default pre-run settings. Once we hit next, Autopsy will do its thing. When Autopsy is done adding a data source, you should always look at the log to make sure there are no errors. In this case, we get an error about not being able to determine a file system type. So given the sector offset and partition type, so we should make sure that the partition that caused the error is legitimate and will not affect our analysis. Click on Finish after reading the log to see the analysis results. In the main window, on the lower right-hand margin, you will see the status of the analysis in a percentage bar. If you click on that status bar, it will show you the file it's working on. You can stop the analysis by clicking on the X. You can see the errors by clicking on the red stop sign. You can begin to click on the left-hand side ingest module's results as autopsy is running or wait until the process is finished. Let's take a look at the user interface layout. We have the tree viewer on the left-hand side. If you select anything from that view, the results of that will be in the results viewer on the top right. If you select anything from the results viewer, you will get the results of that in the content viewer on the lower right. You also have a keyword search area up on top and the status area on the very bottom. The left hand side is the tree viewer, which gives you the overall look at the entire case. It breaks down the data sources, the views, which is the file types, deleted files and file size. If you further click in file types, you can see by extension or by MIME type. Continue to drill down, the extensions are categories by images, videos, audio, archives, and databases. Documents are sorted by HTML, Office, PDF, plain text, rich text. Executables contain .exes, .dll, .bat, .cmd, .com. MIME types break down into application, audio, image, text, video, etc. Deleted files break down into the file system and the names are recoverable Files that are categorized by sizes are slotted into the category of 1 gigabyte or more, 200 megs to 1 gigabyte, or 50 to 200 megabytes. The results section has extracted content from some ingest modules, keyword hits, hash set hits, email messages, and interesting items. Lastly, you will have tags and reports. As the ingest modules run, you can see the status bar on the lower right-hand side of the window. Once it's done at 100%, we can click on the mail looking icon on the top of the window to see the messages from the ingest modules we just selected to run. In this case, there are six messages from the two ingest modules, five from the interesting files identifier, and one from the keyword search module. We can click on each item for more details. Here, it identified the OneDrive executable as an interesting item under the cloud storage subcategory and the BitLocker and Veracrypt executables as interesting items 
under the encryption programs subcategory. Step four, manual analysis. Here, we're going to select a few photos like the kidnapping notes and the photos of Renzik. And we're gonna right click on the item to bring up the menu. Then select add file tag and then tag and comment. We are going to leave the tag as the bookmark and then add a comment about the kidnapping note and the photos of the victim. Step five, report generations. Lastly, let's generate a report of your examination. You can select tools and then generate report or the big button labeled generate report. There are nine report modules to choose from. HTML is one of the more common ones, but others have usages for specific investigative types. Like if you have GPS coordinates, the KML format would be useful for input into Google Earth. For header, I'm going to put my case number. For the footer, I'm going to put today's date. Then you can select which data sources to include. Lastly, select which data to report on. You can select all results, all tagged results, or specific tag results. Click on the HTML link to bring up the report on a browser. You can see the navigation for each section on the left-hand side. You have a case summary that gives you the info on the images processed, the time zone specified, the version number of autopsy, and the version numbers of the ingest modules. Then the items which were tagged and selected to be included in the report. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we took a real quick look at the steps in using autopsy for a digital forensics case. Keep an eye out for future videos where we will drill down into each step in much more detail. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.